five, and there we go. What's up, Hacksters? It's Friday, that means it's Fundum Friday. That means I have to have at least a tenuous co connection uh, in the theme to something related to crowdfunding. Good for us, we found that. So, ever since CES, I've been looking for an excuse to talk about all the smart glasses that cropped up this year. So, you know, there have been companies trying to sell their own smart glasses, AR glasses, whatever, since about 2015, or even earlier. But, we haven't seen quite such an explosion until this year. There's just like a huge volume of new companies doing this stuff. And so one of those is Music Lens here, the first smart glasses for daily use. Kinda? Mm, really? Um, they don't do a lot of the stuff that we would expect from smart glasses. Uh, and I'm gonna go into that in just a second. Uh, but first I wanna start with, um, you might think of smart glasses as being merged with uh, augmented reality, which is the way that I consider them. Uh, and I want to first go over what's the difference between like virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, and this new XR term, it's I think like extended reality. So I found this blog post by North of 41 who do a pretty good description of the difference between all of them. Virtual reality is a totally simulated environment, so you're immersed as much as possible right now, mostly with video, sometimes with audio, uh, and then you probably don't have smell, touch, or sound, or, or uh, taste. But those are options for the future. So this is a completely, you're sort of in your little bubble, and you might have a little thing that lets you walk around or whatever, you might have controllers, but you're in this space that's totally simulated. Then augmented reality is something like Pokemon Go or whatever, where you have the world that you can see, that's the regular world, but you also have things superimposed upon it, which are fictional or virtual. And either your phone is doing that, or in the case of smart glasses, you might have like a display, like a heads up display that is giving you data about what you're seeing, about navigation, about what's playing on your uh, headphones or whatever. You've also got mixed reality, which according to this blog post, I had a little trouble differentiating AR and MR. So according to these people, the difference with mixed reality is that real and virtual objects actually interact. So in Pokemon Go, for example, if a car goes by, as far as I know, I mean, you never played the game, it doesn't like affect where things are in the virtual world, and you can't reach out and touch the Pokemon with your real hand and have it affect it. Um, likewise, the Pokemon can't like affect things in the real world, fortunately. <laughs> but in mixed reality, you can, for example, reach out and touch a simulation of something that's going on in front of you that's totally virtual. And extended reality is apparently sort of a an umbrella term that's kind of encompassing all of these things. So especially augmented reality and mixed reality, but also virtual reality. So it's sort of reality plus. <laughs> and I think people mainly just like it because it's got an X in it, so it looks cool. You know, otherwise it would be ER, not XR, obviously. X is more futuristic. So they've got this cool little diagram here. Uh, and also there's a Wired article about XR, if you're still curious about what exactly that means. So, I want to start with some smart glasses that I think really encompass what I would think of as smart glasses. These are things that incorporate augmented reality as well as audio, both input and output, so you can talk to it and you can hear stuff back from it. And then also you would probably have a visual display. So the hottest one this year was definitely the Focals by North because they look like real glasses, they don't look like a huge gadget, and they... Uh, yeah, they come in a bunch of different styles, they've got all these integrations and things. These are the ones that Amazon has included Alexa on. So they you can talk to Alexa through it. Unfortunately, Alexa can't talk to you back unless you Bluetooth connect this to an external set of headphones or a speaker where you can hear her, but you can talk to it. And you have this Alexa he uh, visual display, which is apparently kind of new. 
stay on top of your day, you can get calendar reminders, all that stuff that you would expect. And besides having uh, a little touchpad, I believe you've also got this little plastic ring controller that you can use to interact with it, which actually reminds me of an old crowdfunding project that I backed and never got called the Ringbow, uh, which was pretty cool. Look at this thing. And it, it also had this little joystick on it and a quite similar design, but it's more bulky and colorful. Yeah, very cool. So the focals have a little controller, kind of like that, and then this sort of bulky thingamajig. Now, to be noted is that it's only available with the display on the right side, so if your right eye is messed up and, uh, or doesn't, if you are visually impaired in your right eye, then you're not going to be able to switch it over to the left side and use it that way. So as someone pointed out on my Instagram, I should figure out how, uh, who that was and thank them. But yeah, you can get a number of different types of lenses. A uh, lot of the distinction between these, these different brands is what kind of options you have. So for focals, for example, you have plain lenses right now. Soon you'll have the ability to add a prescription. There's no option for shades yet, but some of the other brands do have this op uh, option. Also, the type of display is interesting. So these ones have a holographic display on the lens itself, which is supposedly visible only to the user, but that should be pretty interesting. These are powered by a Qualcomm chip, by the way. So yeah, that's the sort of new hotness. They had this whole display in the Amazon Alexa room at CES, and I got to try them on. They're pretty cool. They're pretty light, which is nice. The Vuzix Blade were the ones that I was really excited to see last year, and they are a lot more bulky, and they seem to be going for more of a uh, sort of corporate or functional audience. These are not about style, they're not about looking cool, they're about being really functional and useful, for example, in a company type environment where you're doing functional things that require information about your uh, surroundings and the data of what you're working with. So they're much more sort of, I mean, you look at this person and it's like, oh, I'm cool, I'm out walking around, having a good time. But it's definitely a lot more of a sort of blocky design, and they've really packed in the features. So they've sort of sacrificed this casual, cool, regular, beautiful look for packing in a USB connection, an HD camera with 8 megapixels, a micro SD storage slot, you've got noise cancelling mice, it runs Android, uh, a full color see through display, you've got a touchpad, dual haptic feedback, and internal batteries. They're really trying to make this fully functional. You've got multilingual voice control, which is kind of cool. Uh, haptic feedback for you. Head motion trackers so that you can somehow like sense what your head is doing. And all kinds of other things. Micro USB earphone jack. Na -na 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 -na. All kinds of cool stuff. You can get these in uh, your glasses prescription, and you can also get photochromic lenses, which will do basically transitions lenses, so that they will do uh, sunglasses when you're in bright light. And you can control it with an app, you can also control it with touch, you can control it with voice. I think that's all I had to say about that. Oh yeah, so the Focals by North cost about $1,000. These also cost about $1,000, depending on which model you get. And these are available on the website. The North Focals are currently available only if you go to one of their showrooms, which is in, I think, Brooklyn and Toronto. Yeah, here we go. You can reserve your place in line if you're nowhere near there, but they really want you to go so that you can have them be custom fitted so that they'll look perfectly into your eyes and, and fit really nicely. You're not supposed to share these, any of these models, you're not supposed to share with other people. A long time ago, I heard about the LaForge, LaForge Optical, which is of course named after Jordi LaForge from Star Trek, and this is a really beautiful design as well. So like North, they are trying to make this look like regular glasses, and they've got a few different styles available, including Mr. DJ, which is an obnoxious Skrillex type of style. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna judge. Um, they come in various different 
options for prescriptions. You can get them regular with no prescription. You can get one single vision. You can also get multifocal lenses, which is pretty cool. These are not one-sided. They are totally balanced, but I'm not sure whether that means that they actually have a display on both sides or they simply... Oh yeah, I think they do actually, because all their little simulations down here show the interface on both sides. The thing is that they have an alpha version that's shipping now to people who've already ordered it, and you can sign up now to get it on the beta version, but not everything is totally included yet. The thing about this is that they are clearly taking the time to make it the best, most beautiful, most functional thing that they can. And at the same, and while that's awesome, and it looks really nice, and they're clearly super conscientious about it, they even have a really cool newsletter where I was amazed that they sent out an incredible amount of information about where they were in the process of manufacturing, what challenges they had faced, how they solved them from a design and manufacturing perspective. That was really fascinating, and the level of transparency is really cool and inspires a lot of trust. At the same time, the amount of time that they're taking in order to do it sort of in this precious kind of, you know, everything must be perfect kind of way, I fear this is going to help make them sort of fall behind a bit because you see things like... Let's see. Oh no, I wanted to be on the other page. <laughs> you see things like these descriptions of the different modes it's going to have based on the speed that you're going. It's going to put you in drive mode versus normal mode versus active mode and where you can even like race against your friends or previous versions of yourself. However, in the normal mode, for example, you have the option to record Vine videos, which hasn't been around for a while. So, assuming that's going to be available on Beta Bold, they kind of need to update their things and make sure that they stay super uh, current, or else they're going to have this problem where they're so good, but at the same time, they're just not keeping up. So, they have this sort of app store idea where you would install these mods that you can do create as a third party, and they've opened that up for developers. And that one currently, uh, the beta would cost about $590. If you go again to the top here and hit the alpha and beta button, you'll see that they're shipping the alpha ones. And for the beta, you can sign up for $590. And for beta bold with the camera, cloud communicator, etc., you can get that for $790. This, this one is going to be controlled by buttons, a touchpad, and an app. Uh, you'll have navigation, activity tracking, which is kind of cool. And this one is powered by a Cortex-M4 running Linux. Next up, we come to the excuse for making this a Fundum Friday. M Music Lens is currently funding. So now we're entering the second tier of smart glasses, where these are technically smart in that they include, they allow you to basically listen to music. There's a whole genre now of glasses and sunglasses that allow you to listen to music either through bone conduction speakers or through regular speakers. And bone conduction speakers are really cool. Um, Adafruit actually for a while sold a bone conduction transducer. Here we go. Oh yeah, still in stock. Cool! You can do all kinds of cool stuff with bone conduction, where basically you put it on your cheekbones or somewhere behind your ear or whatever, and you can listen to stuff just by vibrating your skull, basically. Instead of using piping audio in through your ears, you just vibrate your skull. And that way you don't have to deal with eardrum damage. All these companies are really excited about the fact that you avoid eardrum damage, which if you're listening to stuff that loud in the first place, like, okay. Anyway, so, bone conduction. I gotta keep myself on target. Music Lens is the first one of this type of device. And the interesting thing is that they list a couple of other options like Virtu and Sogan. I, I looked up uh, Virtu, which is a super fancy phone company, uh, and it, apparently they created a version of smart glasses, but I can't find it anywhere. Uh, Zungle is definitely one that's out there. So this one has touch control, wearing recognition, so presumably it turns on automatically when you put it on, customized control app, and it's got five styles, and it says that it's super cheap, and it's going to be better than you all, all the other ones, 
and for less money. So your first smart glasses, you can take calls, you can do touch control, you can get FM radio, which is kind of cool. And you have four gigabytes of on offline storage, which is nice. <laughs> you can also use this for your phone. So check that one out. What's the current price on it? $66. That is not bad. And that's going to be really nice for you. You can also upgrade to the four gigs of storage, which will put you around $100 for the price. But that's still much cheaper than what we've seen for all the other options. These are shipping in March 2019. You can get prescription versions or non-prescription, and they use bone conduction. There's no display or camera. Again, all the ones from here on basically have no display. Next up, the View glasses did a Kickstarter back in 2016, and they're still in the stage where you'll be able to pre-order them. So a lot of these have been going for quite a while, and you can tell that it's still in its kind of growing pains as a technology because things like the LaForge uh, glasses and the View glasses have both been in sort of development and production for a number of years now. In the case of the View, it was crowdfunded two plus years ago, and it's still just in the pre-order stage. But they do look really nice, and I got to try these, actually. These used to be made out of the same... Uh, co-working space where Haxter was for a while. So I got to try them on. The bone connection was pretty cool. The sound was a little tinny, but it did work and that was pretty rad. So this one also has activity tracking and allows you to do hands-free calls. And again, it doesn't have any kind of a display, but you do have a sort of touch gesture control and a bunch of different styles. Everyone likes to put this little exploded display up just because it's really cool and sci-fi and James Bondy, and I, I'm totally here for that. Now we get into a little bit of the problematic aspect of crowdfunding. So this is one of two in the list where they just seem to have given up or taken the money and run. They basically went AWOL. So these guys posted a bunch of updates for a while about how they were assembling the molds, and this is what their studio looks like, and they've got all these pieces everywhere. We've got some photos, they have some minor flaws that are going to be connect corrected, but nothing big. And this was back in October, and apparently ever since then, nothing has been said. Nothing has been shipped. All the backers are kind of furious, <laughs> and it's especially bad because there's 2,300 of them. That's a lot of angry people. This one was supposed to cost about $140 and allow you to have multicolored lenses, but it has not materialized. And they're based in Sunnyvale, so I'm tempted to just like go down and see what the deal is, but <laughs> I don't think I would find anything. If you are more risk averse and you don't want to end up like one of those 2300 people, you might check out the Bose Frames Audio Sunglasses. There are a few models of these that are just sunglasses and not even regular glasses, which I don't understand why anyone... So, my glasses, right? If you want smart glasses that can also be sunglasses... Glasses? That's gonna blow your mind. Wait, I need to do it like this. <laughs> Sunglasses. Oh, I'm not smooth enough to, cat <laughs> to carry that off. But check it out! I can even do that! It's amazing! Can your AR smart sunglasses do this? I think not. Like, I'm not listening to music, but at least I don't have to swap glasses completely and stop listening to my music and change where it's coming out of in order to put on my sunglasses, you know? So, I don't think a lot about... I think you should go with a regular version and then just get these, like clip-on sunglasses that are like 10 bucks on Amazon and they're amazing and I call them dad glasses because my dad wears them but they're genius so don't go for the sunglasses but if you do go for one that isn't crowdfunding go for the Bose frames or something like that they've got a couple different styles you can pick from and yeah bunch of options these are about $200 you can get them right now the view glasses that I just mentioned, by the way, are supposed to ship in March of 2019, if you pre-order them now. So, <laughs> I really, I'm gonna write up this all, by the way, in a blog post. Right now I just have a Google spreadsheet, but we're gonna do a blog post and then you'll be able to actually look all this stuff up at once and compare and contrast. So these do not use bone conduction, and I would expect that would 
<clears throat> would mean really t tinny, tiny, awful speakers. They are tiny, but it's Bose, so they're a music technology company. So my assumption is that they probably have decent sound quality, despite the fact that they are teeny tiny little speakers. Another thing is that some of the bone conduction things claim that no one else can hear your music. That's not necessarily true. Other people may hear little tinny noises coming from your head. And so it's still clear that you're listening to Metallica instead of listening to your grandma give you know, tell her story for the 40th time. That's a terrible thing to say, but you know, you won't be able to do that, okay? Don't do that because they'll be able to tell. And I assume it's the same thing with speakers, but they say that they are very directional speakers, so they're still discreet, which is cool. Yeah, this is what they're talking about here. Sound for you and only for you. You hear rich, immersive sound while others hear practically nothing. Exclusive technologies and custom speakers direct sound at you and away from others, which is always what speakers do. They're always kind of directional. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Anyway, <laughs> so let's see. Where's my, oh yeah. So these are about $200. They run with tiny speakers. They only are, are available with shades. You control them via an app. And supposedly they come with audio AR as well. So you'll have some kind of immersive audio experience, presumably beyond just listening to music. Music is just the beginning. Fitness, travel, games too. Da da da. Bose AR, the world's first audio-only augmented reality platform where applications will utilize contextual audio to deliver first-of-a-kind experiences. Yeah, it'll be unlocked by a, via a free software update coming soon. All right, you can find a store to check these out as well. Next up we have Zungle. These are the ones that were mentioned in the music, whatever it was called, <laughs> music lens, yeah. Uh, crowdfunding campaign as a competitor. So apparently inferior to Music Lens, but they are pretty styling. The Zungle is again, just a pair of sunglasses. You cannot get it. Well, let me check my notes. Can you get it in other versions? You can get them in plain clear lenses. Okay, as well as shades. In fact, you can swap the lenses around. Where's this? Uh, somewhere there is a link to where you can look at all the different types of lenses they have. Yeah, so you can swap these out. And you can get them in like a matte black color and a matte gray color, which is pretty nice. And if you order them right now, then you can get them for a number of dollars off. It's kind of unclear when they're shipping or if they're shipping right now. I think that they are. But at the same time, there's some links on the site about pre-ordering. Uh, and meanwhile, there's information about how long it takes to ship to different places. So it seems like you can order it right now. And I guess the way to find out would be to try and order them and see what happens, but didn't get around to that. Beyond the crowdfunding and super official sites and stuff, you've also got a ton of different versions that are available across various knockoff sites and cheap electronics sites. So you've got the Sogan, which is another one that is has been compared to the other ones that I've seen. This has, for everyone, super light, free ears, so that it's using bone conduction, um, and it's quite small and it's water resistant. A number of these say that they're pretty water resistant. You've got, for example, the Bose frames say that, or the Zungles say that they are water resistant and sweat resistant, which is very good. These ones also apparently, and they run about 90 to 100 dollars. Here's another listing for them where it's $113, $114. You can get a number of different options, including clear lenses and shaded lenses and things like that. You can also find various other sort of versions of the same thing. This is not, this is Wakeman. They look a little bulky, but kind of nice. I've noticed that with a lot of these, <laughs> these ones in particular, they put something like the thickest part of the glasses is kind of right behind your ears, so it ends up making your ears stick out, which I would think is not like, you know, clearly people are very concerned about how they will look wearing these. And so if you have a pair of these and it makes your ears super stick out, I feel like that would be a negative, but whatever. Up to each their own. See this guy, and then see this woman, and then 
this guy too, it just seems like it pushes him forward. Not that that's a bad thing, you know, but like generally not what people are going for. Then these ones have this little knobby thing that's coming out of here. Again, they're another bone conduction one. And they again run about a hundred dollars. Very interesting. Oh, and then a bunch of options on Alibaba if you look around. <laughs> cool. Look at this. Oh, you could look so cool on the beach in like your cargo shorts and these things. Sorry. Okay, time to move on. Okay, so here's another one. This is our second scam artist, basically. They were the one number one most funded sunglasses on Kickstarter, shipping 100% guarantee. Oh, yikes. I mean, I think they did ship, actually, but the people who got them said that they did not really work, and they were slow, and they broke. Some people did not get them. The quality was super low, and there's a bunch from these people saying that they were broken either when they arrived or they were really, really fragile. And so, yeah, the glasses were just junk, mainly due to the fact that the bone conductor speakers were an absolute joke. Oh, if they had only been regular sunnies without the bulk of the speaker, they might have had some value, as the lenses were actually quite nice. This was the biggest scam slash waste of money ever. Never received the product or money back. Busy company, more like it closed down to prevent any loss of funds, etc., etc. We don't need to read the comments. That's like rule number one of the internet. But, um... Yeah, always check the comments, I guess, before you decide to bag something. Although, you know, by the time people aren't getting their stuff when it was expected, presumably all the backing has already been done. Let's see what happens if you go to buhel.com. Oh, it's in Italian and it's not configured anymore. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. That's pretty shady. So, at this point, let's take a quick look at some of the things that I saw at CES, and we're going to take another quick look back at a few other cool things soon in the browser. But for now, we're going to look at my own photos because I took them and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> this is the Enreal Light. So, this company has a pair of AR glasses. And they're very powerful, but at the same time, they require an external controller. And this is a big, you know, sort of debate for companies that are trying to make face-mounted technology. Do you try and make it beautiful on the face and then possibly need an external controller to handle all the extra stuff that won't, that would clunk it up? Or do you make them huge and clunky and just try to sort of deal with it so that you can say that it's a self-contained unit, you know? It's up to you. And then of course you're trying to fit all the battery life into one little tiny spot on the glasses as well, which is another debate that you have to have with yourself. So these ones have Qualcomm, and we'll look at those in a, just a second. These are the Shadow Creator. There were also a bunch of more sort of bulky VR-y, mixed reality-y things where they take up a lot more space, but they have more capabilities, and they're more immersive, and they have a wild, wider field of view. For example, on some of these things like the LaForge, you're not going to get little animations in them like that you can interact with on the table or whatever. For some of these, it's more like the HoloLens where it's got a bigger field of view and you can actually sort of see things like virtual objects in context. Not just Alexa info slides or whatever. Here's another shot of the Focals by North and the controller. The Vuzix Blade Edge. It sounds so cool. <laughs> But you can get real-time news feeds such as weather, sports scores, stock quotes, and gaming contact and content, and text message alerts that are overlaid on your real-world view, delivers to your glasses without taking your phone out of your pocket. You know that as soon as these become more widespread, they're going to start selling ads. You know they're going to do that, and it's going to be the most obnoxious thing in the world. So, anyway, this is endemic to... Smart glasses as a whole, though, so it's just something to think about. We've got a, a Z-Space laptop that is designed... It's an extended reality laptop that allows students to lift virtual stimulations from the screen using a stylus and examine them in detail, a enabling a deeper understanding of STEM curriculum. I'm not sure this would actually help with your education, but it sounds kind of cool. So Z-Space laptop. This is a terrible picture, but I'm sure you can figure it, um, take a deeper look at it online. I did not really delve into virtual reality or more intense augmented reality headsets for this show because I want to focus on. There's plenty to look at just among smart glasses, but 
Um, I thought this thing was pretty cool. This is called the Mira. And it's basically a way to use your existing smartphone, slot it into a headset and use that for augmented reality, which would be pretty heavy on your face, but also is very affordable and would allow you to use your existing device for the smarts. And I like how they attach it with this sort of elastic membrane that the phone slots into. So I thought that was a cool idea for keeping the costs low, but still making this an accessible technology. Cool. Oh, and then we have a bunch of different car stuff where they put heads-up displays on cars and called that augmented reality, which is valid. So yeah, you're smashing success, not so much. Okay, here's the Unreal site. It's very, very pretty, as you can see. And they've got all these flashy photos of pretty people but you can still see that there's this cable on there that's sort of, and the, the things themselves are lightweight and comfortable, but you do also have to have this um, separate controller that you hold in your hand. So yeah, where the Focals by North have a little ring that you use, this has a little sort of handheld controller. It looks like it might click or clip onto a belt or something, which would make it a little bit nicer. And then you also have a separate computing unit. So that's like several other things that you have to attach to yourself. And your glasses have a little cable on them. So that, that could be a bit of a, a detraction from the excitement about this one. But it's USB-C compatible, you've got a 52 degree field of view, and it can do SLAM, which is simultaneous location and mapping, which means that it can sort of see the environment around you map out the 3D space and then respond to that. So that's kind of cool. Six degree of freedom tracking, so ways that you move, plane detection and object recognition. So it's got a little bit of AR smarts in there as well. This one is running on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 and it runs Android, AKA more Linux. <laughs> it's got SDKs available for Unity and Unreal Engine. Cool. This also has uh, a touchpad, that's how the little controller works. So that's kind of cool. Very pretty. We have, oh yeah, this is just a sort of honorable mention. We've got some smart glasses that were also funded. I think these were a while ago. When was this? Did I delete these from my, oh no. no, okay. So these were funded a while ago. And you can check out a ton of the other ones if you want. These are actually called the Vader, which I thought was an interesting choice. And then, oh yeah. Since it is a hackster video, I have to plug a really cool project that was recently uploaded by Alan Maurer. So Alan posted this project of doing a DIY set of data glasses to use with his multimeter so that he can have a little heads up display that shows what the reading of the multimeter is. Let me see if I can find a close up image of what it looks like on the screen. Come on. Here we go. So you can see this little OLED screen over here. And then that gets reflected off of this little bi-directional splitter thingy. <laughs> Reflector. <laughs> ah, vocabulary. You've got a mirror embedded in the frame here. And then also a little optical lens. He does a really cool description of how he had to go and research optics basically do a little self crash course in optics in order to learn how you make it so the human eye can focus on the image that you're projecting without eye strain so it places it in a, a spot where it's always in focus and it's actually useful to you and not super blurry so that's pretty cool you fit all this stuff into this relatively tiny enclosure you've got a lipo battery a bluetooth module a, an arduino all this stuff down here the convex lens, micro OLED. Let's see, and he used a CD box cut up for the reflector. Very cool. This one got popular and I think it should be more popular because it's very, it's like one of the coolest heads up displays that are DIY that I've seen. 
Oh yeah, of course there's... Well, this isn't really a heads up to... Well, it sort of is. So I pulled this up because it's vaguely relevant and it's by Not Impossible Labs. We talk about this one kind of a lot. And it's because um, there's this graffiti artist called Tempt and McEbling from Not Impossible saw that he or met this guy, found out that he had ALS and he was losing mobility and wouldn't be able to do his writing or graffiti anymore. So they took this camera, attached it to a pair, a cheap pair of shutter shades from Venice Beach and hooked it up to a projector so that it can detect eye movements, translate those into words and project stuff onto a wall. It's a pretty cool story. And instead of projecting stuff onto your eyes, you're projecting the actions of your eyes onto a wall. I think it's neat. What else have we got? Oh yeah, this is just more about the La Forge. And this is the rainbow I was talking about. Okay, we've run through all of my tabs. There is nothing left to talk about. I'm gonna put the links to all of these things in the description to this video. I haven't done that yet because I wanted to just like do the video already. I'm gonna share my spreadsheet with you and I'm gonna publish all of this in a Medium blog post. Just go to blog.hackster.io and you'll be able to find it. And yeah, I'm really curious about what hands-on experiences people have had actually wearing this kind of stuff in their real lives. Like, does it work for you? Most of them have pretty decent battery life, so you can go like a whole day. Someone is screaming over there. I don't know what the goal is. Uh, and I really wanna know what the audio quality is on these things, what you wish they had that they don't in terms of features, what you think the future of smart glasses is gonna be like, how we should hold people accountable to the crowdfunding uh, campaigns that they do, and which are your favorite ones that you see out there? What's the best style? What's the best technology? What's the best audio? What's the best video? Do you prefer a laser projection onto your eyes? Do you prefer something holographically displayed in front of you and how can we make these things better when you have visual impairments and you want to use augmented reality all this stuff i think yeah especially if there's like a really cheap one that you can get your hands on i think that'd be really cool to know yeah all this stuff please do interact and i'm gonna sign off now have an awesome rest of your friday and have a great weekend we'll see you monday ciao